We start with good news uh, this hour. Minutes ago, Johnson & Johnson released results from its phase three trial of a COVID-19 vaccine, which could be approved for emergency use as soon as next week. It showed 85% protection against severe cases of the disease, although the overall effective rate is lower. Some advantages, it is a single dose and it can be stored in a regular refrigerator. And the new vaccine is effective against the strain of the virus first discovered in South Africa and just detected in the U.S. Let's bring in senior medical correspondent Dr. Tara Narula. Tara, good morning. Good morning, Anthony. The vaccine was tested in more than 44,000 people in the U.S., Latin America, and South Africa. If authorized, it would be a much-needed third vaccine available in the U.S. to meet the demand that outpaces current supply. There's no question that this vaccine is going to be a game changer. Dr. Matai Mammon, global head of pharmaceutical research and development for Johnson & Johnson, is glowing about the results of the company's phase three COVID-19 vaccine trials. The real world effectiveness of this vaccine is apt to be very high. Data from those trials were based on about 44,000 participants, out of which only 468 contracted COVID. The study looked at protection against both moderate and severe COVID-19 cases. The vaccine candidate was 85% effective in preventing severe cases of the disease in people of all ages and backgrounds 28 days after vaccination. And what we mean by severe COVID is feeling particularly sick at home. That's about 80% of the severe cases or in some cases being sick enough to go seek medical attention. Results also revealed protection against multiple emerging virus variants, including the strain most recently discovered in South Africa. Dr. Mammon says the numbers are encouraging. We had 85% efficacy uh, against um, uh, serious COVID disease. And that's meaningful because there's a variant in South Africa that's particularly problematic. So that makes me rest easier. Unlike the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines, which use mRNA to carry the code to make the coronavirus spike protein, which allows the coronavirus to invade human cells, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine uses DNA. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine also uses a modified weakened cold virus to gain entry into human cells. This then triggers an immune response, teaching the body to fight off the real coronavirus. How is it that with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, we may only need one dose? We went through an experimental process and picked the very best one that optimized for neutralizing antibodies, binding antibodies and T cells. So we're able to get uh, a lot more immune response than a typical single shot. Yeah, I would much prefer only to have to go in to get my one shot rather than to have to go in a month or three weeks later to get my second shot. Bali Palendron is an immunologist at Stanford Medicine who says a single dose vaccine can only aid the Biden administration's plan to increase availability. What sort of public health impact do you think having a single dose vaccine could have? I think enormous public health impact because uh, from a clinician's perspective, uh, it's so much easier to administer a single dose vaccine. The U.S. government has pre-ordered about 100 million doses, but Johnson & Johnson only expects to have fewer than 10 million doses available for February. We asked Dr. Mammon about reports of production delays. He said the company will meet the U.S. order by June and make a billion doses this year globally. Of course, the FDA still needs to review the data to see if this vaccine is effective enough for use. Tara, I think so many people would prefer to take a vaccine that only requires a single dose. Do you think people should wait for that Johnson & Johnson vaccine when it's authorized? It's such a great question. And, you know, Anthony, at some point we may have enough supply that people can choose and wait. We may have data to suggest that there's benefit in one population over another. But right now we are not in a position in this country to be thinking we're standing at a buffet and we can choose. Every day that goes by that somebody doesn't have a shot in their arm is the day that they're vulnerable to dying, the day that they're vulnerable to becoming a long hauler, a day that our country is taking longer to reach herd immunity. So right now the best shot is the one that you can get as soon as you can get it. I'll take the first one that's available. I'm with you on that one. Um, it's very comforting that, that this is that this vaccine is resistant to the South African strain. Uh, Pfizer and Moderna are working on booster shots to protect against variants of COVID. Do you think there might be some kind of booster needed down the line or a second shot ultimately for the Johnson & Johnson vaccine? 
It's possible, you know, Johnson & Johnson is currently conducting a study looking at a two-dose regimen. We don't have those results yet. Uh, but the good news is that as soon as they're able to sequence these variants, Dr. Mammon and other immunologists have explained to us that it's very easy to then alter the vaccine to make it effective against strains that may be more difficult for us to fight off. Uh, so it's, a, it's an easy fix, potentially, if we find those other variants Tara, quickly, that we're concerned about. How soon do you think this, this will be authorized? Well, it's possible that within the next couple of weeks, Anthony. That would be good news. All right, Tara, Dr. Tara Narula, thanks so much.